What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. Uh, we're going to go with Carson Wentz here. Um, Who's this was playing a, almost as bad as that debate was. Like yeah. That. <laughs> this was a guy who, in super flex leagues and regular leagues, like I was pretty bullish on um, just because he was kind of always being the last guy on like what I consider the tier break of quarterbacks. Um, and, I, and we have seen some really good play out of Carson Wentz. Um, but I want to just touch on a little something of maybe the psychology of part of what we saw Wentz be so good last year with nothing. Like at the end of last year, like had the team on his back and basically, you know, they were just playing with a bunch of nobodies, which they're not that different currently and he's really struggling but we go over to let's see what you guys think about this we go over to the Packers and Aaron Rodgers and you know a lot to do about them boys drafting Jordan Love this year and how how terrible of a draft pick it was and they should have got a skill position player and I don't argue with that necessarily but you know there's a lot of being made now of like maybe Jordan Love was the best pick the Packers could have made and he should be up for the running for MVP because if, if this would have took to get Aaron Rodgers to play at the level that he's playing at. Worth a first you know. rounder. Right. Um, and some people will say, well, then you're implying that Aaron Rodgers, you know, wasn't trying as hard as he could to do everything he can to win, which, you know, I'm not, I don't disagree with that logic for the most part, but if you're going to tell me you're going to bring somebody in at my profession who you, you think is going to be replacing me or can do my job, like I'm going to go in there and work my ass off even if I have been really good and prepare, like there's just an extra fire that's going to be burning inside of me to be like, nah, like fuck that shit. Like I'm the man I'm coming in here. I'm going to show you how to work. Like watch this shit. Um, and just a little extra motivation like that. And you know, I know some people think it's silly, like saying, well, why? you think Aaron Rodgers isn't trying as hard? No, but I think Aaron Rodgers is, is the type of cat where if you push him like that and say, Hey, nah, we got somebody behind you here, bud. Like th there's a fire lit in him. Um, so flip to the other side of that and the Eagles go ahead and draft a guy in the second round and maybe Carson Wentz isn't necessarily built for that. And maybe that's got him a little rattled this year. What, what do you guys think about that? Cause I've, I definitely hated on the, not necessarily the pick because Wentz has been banged up and I understand it, but along the same lines is the Eagles could really use another player besides Jalen hurts right now in their fucking lineup. Um, whereas, you know, the Packers just needed another year in the system and it looks like Lazard and MVS and those guys are starting to come around a little bit and Aaron's having fun and, and got a hold of the system a little bit more. Whereas we know that Wentz and uh, Peterson have been together and all of a sudden, you know, Wentz just looks out of source. And I don't, I don't think that the answer at all is putting in, uh, Jalen Hurts. Uh, I don't nah, think he's ready. But um, the fact that the reporters are already asking the head coach well, about that is and terrible. This is, and, and again, it's also Philly. Like I grew up around the area. There, I'm not. I'm the most anti Philadelphia fan in the universe because I grew up around them all, and they're the worst sports fans. Like, and I'm not saying all of them. There are plenty of knowledgeable, really smart Philly guys, but in general, and I think fan bases in general can be this way but I was just surrounded a lot and it's just like anytime some dude is is not playing well even though he's done a bunch for you guys like it's or for the Eagles it's always just like ah he's a bum get him out of here he's terrible he's the worst like they're like impatient I'm, dynasty owners right so what are, what are your thoughts on any of that like I you know let me let me jump in here psychology? real quick before you take it over big co um I, you made the statement about maybe Carson Wentz isn't dealing well with the pressure of having an early round quarterback drafted ahead of him. I, I don't know if that's the pressure that he's having the most trouble with as opposed to like the actual defensive uh, line pressure that, that is being created in his face. Sure. I mean, there's um, a lot more but, to it. I right, just thought it was interesting right, parallel. But, but it brings up the point of, of how decimated not only this whole team is with injuries, but specifically the offensive line, even before the season started. I mean, they lost, uh, they lost their left tackle. They lost two guards, Brandon Brooks, and uh, I'm not sure how to say that dude's name, Sue Amato, but he, he uh, you know, these are guys, really good players that played for them last year, and then all of a sudden they're without these dudes. And then you got old man Jason Peters having to swing well, they back. Lost, they, lost, uh, they lost the guy from Boston College, Dillard, as well in right. camp. Yep, yep. The tackle, that was an early round pick of theirs, I believe. And 
Um, you know, they, they did at least give him a first round wide receiver, and they went quarterback in the second round. But I don't know. I want to try and make excuses for Carson Wentz, but he's also not making very good throws. Like he's got two picks in every game, and like this last no. game, one of them was tipped, but it was thrown into like triple coverage. It wasn't going to be good even if it wasn't tipped. And then the next throw, the next interception to uh, Ertz was just a bad throw. And yeah, that one was bad. The tip, I'll, you know, I'm never going to give you the tip. But. but but there was like three guys surrounding the dude he was trying to throw it to. And so I, I don't think it was yeah. going to go well. Not that it would have been a pick, but like it just – then there's times where he is dropping a little dime. He, he, he dropped a dime to Ertz for that touchdown. And then he's scrambling pretty well and kind of keeping drives alive and, and scoring touchdowns on, on the ground. So he, he's, he's doing a lot – he's doing some – but he's also playing pretty bad. I, I don't know. I'm I'm a, I'm definitely I'm definitely kind of on the side of all these fans just being like, ah, maybe Wentz isn't good because it's like it's always seems like no, it's, it's, it seems it's, like it's been a minute before since he's been like so good, like an MVP candidate. And then he we've dealt, seen he's dealt good with Wentz, it, and now he's playing pretty bad. What What do you think, Big Co? Are you worried about Carson Wentz? I'm worried about the team. I'm wor- right. I mean, I'm worried about the team folding under the pressure here because you want to be good. They closed the season strong last year. Um, I was listening to the Lefko uh, podcast today, and he's got um, Brian Westbrook on there, and there's not many players, people that are in the media as close to the Eagles as somebody like Westbrook who's going to speak the truth. And he was talking about how um, just between Peterson, the prep for the games, and uh, Carson Wentz, just looking like he's not reading the defense out there. Just looking like he's surprised every like every time he takes a snap, he's he's guessing at what a defense is doing. And I was at Casey's house on Sunday, and we had three or four TVs going, and I didn't watch every single snap of the Eagles game to break that down. Um, but it, it's you know, a couple of years ago he was an MVP candidate, tore his ACL. The team was they're up and down with their weapons they're, that feel like their defense has been hurt for three years in a row. Now, every time you turn around, they, they had some good linebackers and they started falling down like flies. Now the offensive lines falling down like flies. Expectations is what gets the pressure. Like the Eagles are supposed to be an NFC. They were supposed to battle the Cowboys for the first spot, for the top spot, for the playoff spot. And it's just, now you got people that are close to the team, or it's not. You know, I mean, I don't know how close Westbrook is to the team anymore, but he was an icon. I feel you know an eagle sure. icon, basically. You know, when you got somebody like him who's willing to speak his honest thoughts, his honest opinions, talking. Not many people for the last three or four years have had a one bad thing to say about the head coach of the Eagles, and now you got bad Except things. For that saying, visor. Now you got bad things being said about the head coach. Now you got now you got the quarterback struggling. When I, you you, dude, other than. The New York Jets wide receivers. Who's got a worse wide receiver group than the Eagles? You know, Nobody. and it's just like I don't the think. One, you know, and it's just like the, the, you got you got you got nobody that you thought was going to be starting on the offensive line anymore, and you got no wide receivers that anybody knows their name of. Really, obviously the dynasty community, but like a casual fan has no idea who JJ Whiteside is. Or the casual Ward. fan has no idea who Craig Ward is. You know what I mean? Uh, Djax is old. He's still talented, but he's old. And that you brought back, you came into the season with one new player on offense. And yes, Rager's explosive, but you came in with one new player. Like Casey said, the second round draft pick sh- should have done like Denver. Denver stacked it up. Denver mm-hmm. said, we're going to give Drew Locke every opportunity we can to see if he's We're going to go good. play with the offense that's in our division, the Chiefs. And meanwhile, the that. Cowboys are defying defense and building an offense. It's like, the, it's like the Broncos were like, we're not sure if Locke's any good, so let's give him all the talent we can. And the Eagles are like, we know Wentz is awesome, so we can let him struggle. It's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. So I'm worried about the team. Um, I'm not worried about necessarily Wentz's psyche right now. He's a, He doesn't look like – Dar- Darnold, Sam Darnold in a press conference. He's not beat down and kicked in the in the pants. Yeah, um, but it's not good. And and it it it's so bad. It's so crazy. It's so it's so hard to put your finger on it because last year, the last those last couple of games of Wentz in the Eagles, he carried them. He put them on their back with nobody else, and he put, threw it to tight ends and running backs. And he just he made any any converted ran around. tight ends, converted quarterbacks. <laughs> he just he got it done. And it's just it's so it's so. Like you said, it's pretty much the same cast of characters they had last year, minus the offensive line, and and it's 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 ugly. 
Yeah, it's ugly. Wentz definitely has a little bit of a Sam Darnoldish Superman complex where he's always trying to make uh, the biggest play possible instead of sometimes maybe just scrambling a little bit and getting down or throwing it away. He's always he's always trying to make a big play, which doesn't doesn't help him out. And I think again, um, like he's not playing well. We can however you want to chalk it up. Like he both have yep. said, like, you know, he's not, he does look a little surprised back there. He, he makes some bad decisions and then he, he will have some good plays and he made, you know, a good scramble for a touchdown at the end of that game, I believe to tie it up or to, yeah, I forget exactly how it played out. Um, but you know, and I think that needs to be part of his game, his scrambling and escapability and, and getting yards it needs to be part of the game. And they've tried to kind of take some of that out because they didn't want their stud getting hurt. Um, I, I don't think there's any, I don't think you should ever, you know, bench your quarterback like that, especially for Jalen hurts. I just, I just don't think he's, he's ready. Oh, no. Um, no. Mm-hmm. if you want to, and we've like, I can't stand when the saints do this taste some hill shit and you just saw it cost them a game. And it's like, dude, stop it with this. Like, I'm so, like, you, you want to try it regular out there or, uh, hurts out there for a play or two, whatever. But like, I just, I don't like. I don't like that kind of stuff. Like, just throw the ball to Kamara. Throw the ball to Miles Sanders. Uh, Dallas Goddard's now hurt. He's out for a while. It's just like it keeps going downhill. You can't get Alshon back. Like you said, you didn't do anything to address the offense. And, you know, it is part Wentz. It's part the offense. It's part the offensive line. He's running for his life back there. He is trying to be Superman. So there's lots of parts and pieces. I'm not necessarily worried about Carson Wentz uh, per se. I think he'll be uh, the end just of the day, fine. Still- and, Sorry, man. He's still no, he's still ahead. putting up fantasy points. Um, it's ugly, and the team's not doing what they want to do. But he's still putting up fantasy points. So it's a, probably a good just the narrative around him stinking so bad. It's a, probably a good buy low in a super flex league. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I mean, as, as far as what you would have had to pay for him a month ago, it's right. definitely cheaper. Yeah, and that's he was always kind of like the cheaper tier break kind of guy. So I, he should be. He might even be down a couple of tiers and, and a good buy. So I, I like that. I'm not panicking on Joe Mixon. I'm not really panicking on Carson Wentz. The Eagles. I have heard some other people talking about that are connected around the organization as far as podcasts and media people talking that, you know, there is a little bit of discord in in the locker room between the coaching staff and people are getting you know not not necessarily buying in like they were bought in. Uh, so. Maybe a little trouble in Philly. Um, I think. I think I agree. I would buy some Wentz. One. One last place. thing before we move on, that gives me a little bit of pause and hesitation and worry with Carson Wentz in regards to comparing him to Sam Darnold, is that that's probably like two of the top guys competing for ugliest quarterback in the NFL. So it's re- it's really hard to win with an ugly quarterback. You know, it is tough to win with an ugly quarterback. Let me say something real quick that, that goes along with what Casey was finishing. I think up Darnold's with. all right looking. Mm, I don't know about that. Ugliest, I don't know about that. Who's, um, who's worse? Who's worse looking than, <laughs> than those two guys? I don't know. We'd have to have an ugly quarterback draft. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. And this is a this we talked about it a couple weeks ago, and everybody's talked about it at this point. Good teams being good and bad teams being bad. The Eagles are not a bad team, but with the offensive line injuries, some of them, some of these guys done for the year, not coming back. Um, you get, you get. This is a big time season for distractions. You got probably some people that didn't opt out because they wanted the money, but don't really want to play or don't really want to be running around and jumping up and down and 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 being, you know, in a gang tackle situation. Um, potentially actually some people are worried about the virus out there still while they're on the field or like, ah, oh, this is terrible, but I'm about to get, I'm getting a couple million dollars. I can't sit at home. You know, if you if things aren't going good, like you said, there's, you know, there's a disconnect in the locker room. If things aren't all in the, all headed in the right direction, the fact, the quickest sport you see it show up in is football. You know, um, if, if those 11 guys out there aren't working their tails off together, the other team's 11, if they are, they get exploited quickly. Um, and then that just that mounts. And like I was talking about the pressure in the locker room, if, if half the team doesn't have to get to a point where half the team's not even interested anymore, it's, it's going to be, it, you're not going to win. Yeah. Luckily the division is, might be the worst division in football. So oh, should keep get, the Eagles semi interested. Yeah. yeah. They it's just very like easy. gain ground with a tie. Um, <laughs> very easy. I, very easy to make the playoffs from here. I think probably Ben Roethlisberger is actually at the top of ugliest quarterback. And then I probably have to throw like Mitch in there as well for uh, 
You oh, know, Mitchell. For the punchable face. Nick Foles. Back. Nick Foles is Nick terrible. Foles. They got, yeah, they got, they got, really they got an ugly one, too. Ritzy Fitzy, <laughs> not handsome. Uh, but the beard, you know, gives him an edge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. 